All right, so let's talk real quick about intermolecular attractions, also sometimes called intermolecular forces, so IMAs or IMFs. Um, you'll see that I have three Lewis structures here, and I've already declared them nonpolar or polar, so that's uh, targets, previous target target 11.7 is polar and nonpolar. So this is assuming that you could do polar and nonpolar and draw Lewis structures, and if not, then you need to go back to a previous video. So if you can get to the point where you can call it polar or nonpolar, then determining the IMAs is pretty easy from there. So intermolecular attractions. Inter means between molecular, so attractions between molecules. So molecules either have strong attractions or weak attractions. And that's based on this positive and negative opposites attract deal. So in a nonpolar molecule like this, overall, it doesn't have a positive side or a negative side because everything kind of cancels each other out. But these bonds um, aren't fully equally distributed as far as the electrons go. So the electrons can kind of slosh around in these bonds. They'll be more to one side than the other, meaning we can have what's called a temporary dipole or an induced dipole. So when we have an induced dipole attracted to another induced dipole, that gives us what we call an induced dipole-dipole attraction. Induced and temporary are synonymous here. So the electrons are sloshing around in those bonds, creates a temporary positive side, a temporary negative side, and that can create one of those opposites attract situations. But since it's just temporary, that's going to be a pretty weak attraction. So induced dipole-dipole attractions are weak, and those happen in all molecules, but it's the only attraction happening in nonpolar molecules. So then these two are polar, but they're a little bit different. So in all polar molecules, we're going to have permanent dipoles, meaning one side's definitely positive and one side is definitely negative. So that's going to create a strong attraction. But permanent dipole-dipole attractions. So those are pretty strong. But then additionally, over here you got water, and water's got some really interesting properties, which are due to the fact that it additionally has hydrogen bonding. So H bonding happens when you have a hydrogen bonded to a really electronegative atom. Specifically, you have an OH, an NH, or an FH bond. That doesn't just mean that F and H or N and H and O and H are in your molecule. It means they're actually bonded together. So you have an O bonded to an H, an N bonded to an H, or an F bonded to an H. That gets you this additional type of permanent dipole-dipole attraction called hydrogen bonding. So it's still permanent dipole-dipole. It's just a special type of permanent dipole-dipole called hydrogen bonding. Sometimes this is just called dipole-dipole, and then sometimes induced dipole-dipole. It's called London dispersion forces. So they mean the same thing. It's just you might see an alternate name. So sometimes this induced dipole-dipole is called London dispersion forces, and sometimes permanent dipole-dipole is just called dipole-dipole. So it's alternate names. I try to use those names because they don't really describe to us what's happening. Induced dipole-dipole and permanent dipole-dipole describes what's actually happening instead of just being a random name after someone like London, London dispersion forces. You may also hear these called Van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces is a synonym for intermolecular attractions. So intermolecular attractions, intermolecular forces, or Van der Waals forces, those all mean the same thing. So sometimes we have multiple names for the same thing, but that's it. They're pretty simple.